This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week 8 in betting is defined by a lot of teams where I have to ask myself, what on earth am I supposed to do with this team? Because a lot of teams in the NFL right now are puzzling. I have to decide, can I buy low on this team or are they just totally dusty? And the problem is, a lot of the teams we're asking that about are in the key games for week number 8. I'm to break those down with Ryan Williams, get his thoughts on those games and his favorite bets across week 8 in the NFL. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here once again by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Uh, we're going to preview week number 8 in the NFL. Ryan, your Bears got a huge win Monday. You had Khalil Herbert anytime touchdown just uh, capping off an awesome week equinemia st brown went over his receiving total in like five minutes no sweat there so yeah. i feel like you got to be in a, on a in a good spot uh head wise heading into week eight. Oh yeah we're running a heater baby um no it, uh, it's it's always fun when when your team uh you have no faith in them and they come out and they <laughs> shut you up uh real quick so that was a fun game to to get after and you know we're we're excited about where things are there uh but yeah anytime we can you know win people money on those island games that's what it's all about so we're, we're just we're just i'm just a man of the people we're just trying to give the people what they want jim that's what we're trying to do uh but you're also trying to win yourself some money because you the bears sure. alt win total was it six plus wins that you had preseason uh six and a half okay so uh they're up to three uh, the, now the alt win total but they're, five and a half was the straight up win total they're getting there. They're yeah. they're chugging along, and they're the NFC along. North looks pretty bad. So <laughs> it's wide open. I think you're in play there for sure. Well, uh, we're not talking about the Bears for today, unfortunately, in that game against Dallas. We'll be talking about some big games across this week, though, and talking about, again, offenses that are struggling and deciding how to handle them as we're now pretty deep into this year and have not seen them wake up as of yet. We'll break that down in just a bit. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our college football week nine betting podcast is up. Had Austin Swaim of Number Fire on to break down his favorite college football bets this week with myself and Dr. Ed Fang. Find that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on the FanDuel YouTube page. Also, the Player Prop episode of Week 8 coming up tomorrow with J.J. Zacharyson should be up around noon or so uh, in both spots. So get those by subscribing to the FanDuel YouTube page and to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. The NBA season is underway, and now it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in free bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel has all your favorite bets for the NBA. You can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So download FanDuel today to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1 800 9 with it. In Kansas, 1 800 522 4700 or ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1 877 770 stop. In New York, 1 877 8 hope and Y or text hope and Y. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1 800 889 9789. In Wyoming, 1 800 522 4700 or in West Virginia, go to 1 800 gambler.net. Now, before we dig into the individual games this week, Ryan, I do want to talk to you overall about how to assess these teams that are struggling. We got the the Bucks, the Rams, the Packers, all of the NFC, curiously, which is a good thing for the Eagles. But we've seen these teams struggling. And we'll talk about the Rams and Packers and their games this week specifically later on. But in general, how what process do you go through in trying to decide, should we buy low on these teams or are they just totally, totally not going to be able to turn this thing around for the entire year? Yeah, I think it's a it's a slippery slope, right? Because we're seven weeks in, so people feel like 
we know everything and and we understand how the rest of the season is going to go. But I think for me, it's looking at how the games have gone and how these teams have played. You know, for for Green Bay, for example, they just they're just making so many mental mistakes. Like if you're paying attention to these games and what happens, they're starting off very strong in these games and they just end up blowing leads or they end up, you know, not hitting on an offensive cylinder, um, getting squeaking out lucky wins against Tampa Bay a couple weeks back. Um, so you, you look at that team and, we look at the trade deadline and see, you know, okay, can they make a couple moves that might make them feel all right? Because the defense has actually been pretty stout and and honestly has kept it from being, you know, from having them get boat raced because the offense can't put up points. For a team like Tampa Bay, they've been showing us all season long that they've been in disarray. Uh, the offensive line struggles coming into this season were tough. Uh, you know, Mike Evans getting suspended um, in week three or whatever that was, you know, definitely hurt. Chris Godwin's been on the injury report. The defense is not the same. Mike Evans is begging for Gronk to come back in post-game <laughs> interviews. Um, so, you know, I think that everything that's gone on with this team, including with Brady, you know, that that's a lot to be able to mm -hmm. dissect. dissect. Um, and when you're looking at, you know, the teams that they play, I mean, they got the, you know, they got the Ravens tonight, then I believe the Rams and then the Seahawks before they go into that week 11 bye, then come out and play Cleveland. And, you know, who knows who the quarterback for Cleveland will be. Um, it's tough sledding for them. And this NFC South is, you know, it, I guess the solace for them and, you know, the thing that they can lay their hat on is that uh, they play in the NFC South and it's wide right. open. So maybe they can squeak in. Um, so, it, you know, for me, I'm looking at how the season has gone, what's to look forward for the rest of the season. And I think the, the trade deadline is a big factor because you look at a team like the Rams last year making that OBJ trade when Robert Woods went down. I think that, you know, there's a lot of things that have been left unsaid for how these teams will look in the season. Um, and so that's something that I try and keep a mindset on and look at future bets and division bets and see where I can get some value on teams. Yeah, I think that what you said there was key was the anatomy of the losses that they've had. You know, what's the, then the path to those losses? And with Green Bay, I think there has been some flukiness, a little bit at least. But the problem is now, no Randall Cobb and potentially no Alan Lazard. I've got yeah. Packers plus 10 and a half. We'll talk about that game later on, and I'm <laughs> very nervous about that. Uh, but there has been some flukiness there. And with the Bucks, you could potentially say the same thing because that Mike Evans dropped touchdown last week. Like, maybe that plays in. But they lost 21-3. to three. They got their butts kicked by Carolina. And... Right. I also have a Bucks money line ticket tonight, so hopefully this doesn't sound stupid Friday morning. But like, I don't know. Uh, my numbers are still saying to bet them, and it's both the 2022 only model and my my model with priors is saying to go that direction. Okay. It doesn't feel good, but <laughs> I'm still winding up there for a lot of the reasons that you discussed. You know, trying to to dissect how we got to where we're at. Now let's talk about one of those teams within that discussion. That's the Rams. We got the 49ers at Rams this week, 49ers one and a half point favorites. This is the first full game. We'll get to see with Christian McCaffrey, but potentially no Debo Samuel. He's banged up right now for the 49ers, but we're adding McCaffrey into the fold. And we often talk about how, you know, running backs aren't going to move the needle a lot in terms of betting. And I think some of the moves we saw Sunday morning might have been a bit of an overreaction with that Tampa uh, spread moving like two and a half points after McCaffrey uh, got traded. So yeah. I'm uncertain uh, about how to view him with this team. I'm excited to watch it. Uh, Christian McCaffrey and a Kyle Shanahan, uh, Kyle Shanahan scheme. What's your view of this offense with McCaffrey in the fold now? And how do you think this game plays out? Yeah, this is I mean, this as much as we talk about Jimmy G, you know, not having to do much in this offense because of the weapons that they've set up around him. I mean, this is just another cog in that in that statement yeah. where just give him the ball. I mean, you saw it last week. This guy's already playing on the first and second series, you know, in the game against the Chiefs. And he's just taking off runs. I mean, it's yeah. rocket ship emoji with this offense with Christian McCaffrey there. It's so unfair that they can, you know, use motion with him and Debo. And it's like, how are they supposed to, you know, contain this team? The the worst part about the offense is that Jim, you know, you have to have Jimmy G back there and trust that he's going to make the right play. I mean, this guy just, I don't know what it is. He gets into his head. I mean, he has layups here. You know, the team is built around you. I get it. The defense is struggling and the secondary is, is hurt. And that's going to be tough for them this week against the Rams. But um, just the offense in general, I'm really excited about. I think that they kind of control their own destiny here. I have not been on the Rams. We talked about this early on in the season. Like I thought Matthew Stafford with the thumb injury, they were kind of just, you know, 
trying to sugarcoat that and make it not seem like a big deal. And it is. And, you know, I, I think they're missing pieces on the offense outside of Cooper Cup, who can move the ball. Uh, the running back situation is absolutely abysmal uh, with Cam Akers, you know, being held out DMPs and Daryl Henderson's now banged up and Kyron Williams is going to be coming off of IR potentially. So we'll see what happens there. But yeah, I think the 49ers should absolutely roll here. Shanahan has had McVay's number um, in the past and we've talked about that before. Yeah. Uh, my models actually have conflicting views of this one, which is confusing to me. Uh, I, my traditional one, the one I use has the 49ers minus 1.32. So pretty much in line at the market. Okay. My 2022 only model actually says to bet the Rams. And I don't want to. Um, and like, that's confusing because like we've seen the Rams be pretty bad this year. So you look at yep. that and you're like, why, if it's looking at just 2022, ignoring priors, would it be so high in the Rams? And part of that's because the 49ers have also fallen pretty far short of my offensive prior on them. And now the defense is banged up. So I think that's the reasoning for it saying this. It says the Rams should be favored by 1.4 points, which I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't put them there, um, but it, it is intriguing. Yeah. So this one is a stay away from me where I have the two things very much in conflict. The one I trust saying it's very efficient. So I'd rather just not take a bet than than force one in there. But it is odd to me that the Rams are popping up in the 2022 only model because I've been disgusted by them. They have no juice. <laughs> like, that's kind of what you were alluding to. Like, they, they need something outside of Cooper Cup. Maybe Van Jefferson is, can add that back in if he returns this week. But like, if you're relying on Van Jefferson, to be like the savior of your offense, that's probably not super inspiring. That's not great. That's not great. No, it's 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 been tough. I mean, Ben Skronik is their second best. You know, uh, well, Tyler Higby. Excuse me. I don't. I don't mean any disrespect for the Tyler, but in the wide receiver <laughs> room, yeah, Ben Skronik has been the second best piece um, for that offense. Which yeah, doesn't doesn't let you sleep well at night if you're going to be betting this team. And he's been fun because he's been playing like fullback and stuff. Like if right. if you're like. Again, your enthusiasm is because of a guy who's like a uh, fullback, tight end, wide receiver hybrid. That's uh, that's a little bit scary. But the Rams, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Ben Skaronic, the new Taysom Hill. I can get behind that. Um, maybe, maybe his elbow's healthier than Stafford's. I don't know about that. Let's uh, stick in the NFC West. Talk about the Seahawks. Uh, the Seahawks yeah. three point favorites against the Giants at home. Uh, total is forty four and a half, and we don't know yet, Ryan, if that calf will play in this game. How much does his availability alter your view of this Giants versus Seahawks game? Yeah, I, I not that I don't care. I, I feel like that's a that's a weird road to take here because DK Metcalf is so explosive, and I don't you know want the people holding that against me as I say that. But like you know the way that Geno Smith in this offense has been playing, like. It it almost it it does matter, but it doesn't matter, Jim. Like when Marquise Goodwin can go out there and start burning and get reps and, and meaningful reps on this team, and like they're just throwing in whoever at tight end, you know, basically before when Russ was there, um, and Tyler Lockett, you know, is still there. Kenneth Walker has been showing us a lot. I, I really, you know, this this line, you know, if you would have told me this is where we were at, you know, with Giants and Seahawks coming into you know week eight uh, before the season, I'd be like, that's disgusting. But three point favorite at home you know we just got to ride the wave I'm sipping the green Kool-Aid um with with that I think the Giants you know they've they've played some teams that just haven't been going on all cylinders and now they're coming into a a road matchup here where that's exactly what's happening with Seattle like they are riding the wave as strong as they could possibly as they possibly could be and like they're looking at the division you know rams are vulnerable uh 49ers are you know trying to up the ante of what it means to win the division there so you know the seahawks are going to come into this game thinking that you know they can compete and belong to win and you know we'll see what happens with the giants there at the quarterback position i know uh daniel jones has been banged up saquon's been banged up this defense has actually been really good uh, but losing daniel bellinger well well that you know that might not mean much to people but he's been like the most consistent consistent offensive piece for that team with Wondell Robinson being hurt, Kenny Galladay being held out, um, Sterling Shepard going down a couple weeks ago. Like they, they just, they've been fortunate and, and lucky enough to be able to be in positions to kind of win these games. And I just don't know if they can do that on the road in Seattle this week. 
yeah uh the uh the bellinger one was gross like that looked that looked not yeah. fun um so but hopefully it gets better soon but tanner hudson we talked about him on a monday show <laughs> okay. a couple weeks ago uh didn't do well there but hey maybe he gets a chance now i think it'll be chris myrick most likely being their lead tight end but tanner hudson baby let's uh let's let that baby cook now this is one where my head goes up against my numbers and i hate that it's not fun because i love gino gino is amazing it's a gino smith revenge game again this week which i adore and i also like i want to be skeptical of the giants because they're six and one and that's pretty fluky based on the things you discuss where they're beating teams who are maybe not at full health and stuff like that but my numbers say i should bet the giants um my I have the Giants win odds at 46.5% and their implied odds at plus 134 in the money line are 42.7%. So about three and a half percentage points of edge there. And that's enough for me to take it. You know, I typically want at least two percentage points of value. And I actually have that here. Uh, my 2022 only model says Seahawks should be favored by 0.7 points. And again, shocking to me. I thought that it'd be all over Gino because they've been so good this year, but also like the giants have weirdly been not bad either. If you just look at adjusted early down passing efficiency, like they're 16th in that. And I don't think they're perceived as being 16th. Then when you add in how good they've been on the ground in early downs, they actually rank seventh in adjusted early down efficiency so far this year. And they've been pretty good on third down as well. Like you said, the defense has been okay. It's odd. I don't really want to bet the Giants because, again, I love Geno and I don't want to root against Geno. But I have some edge on the Giants here without DK Metcalf being factored. Like, I have him assumed in right now because I don't want to assume that. I have him assumed in and still saying to bet the Giants. And it doesn't make me happy. I did take the money line yesterday at plus 134. So it doesn't make me happy. But, like... I feel like I kind of have to trust my numbers over myself in this one, which is uh, not a super exciting proposition when that involves betting against my son, Geno Smith. Exactly. Yeah. And I was just looking here real quickly. I mean, yeah, 134 with the Giants on the money line. I mean, I think that's more so if I was taking a Giants bet, I'd be willing to, you know, go there even with them getting the three number. Uh, But I think that's the more likelihood outcome because this is how they've been playing the past couple of weeks. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, don't feel good about it. I'm excited on. So it's a 425 game. So by 513 is the over under for when I regret this. Um, I'm going to put that as being the the odds over under 513 p.m. Eastern. is when I regret betting the Giants money line. Let's finish up here with the Sunday night game. That's the Packers at the Bills. Bills are 10 and a half point favorites, total 47 and a half. And it's a huge spread here. Uh, But that also makes a lot of sense based on the two teams involved. Can the Packers keep pace and cover or is this justifiably a huge spread? Yeah, I mean, I I think that, you know, anytime we're getting a number close to 11, you got to look at the other side. I mean, I get it. The Packers have not had any merit, shape or form to want us to put, uh, you know, hard earned dollars on to them. But, you know, we've seen just the way that the scoring has been this year. Uh, with scoring being down, um, these larger spreads are just not covering in the same way that we would expect them to. It's actually the games with the you know lower spreads that are kind of you know pushing pace, and it makes sense, right? Because the lower spread, um, we're expecting that game to be competitive, and you know the offense have been keeping it close. And then you know if it just so happens to be close, then you know we see a lot more scoring um, to to have happen. But yeah, this one at ten and a half. It just kind of feels gross. I mean, Buffalo coming off of the bye there. I know people are probably going to be riding the wave, um, <clears throat> and especially without Cobb and Lazard, if he if he's not able to to suit up, you're like, who is he going to throw the ball to, and how are they going to get things going? But you know, it, it is a decent matchup where we could tr- probably see Aaron Jones hopefully get more than four carries in a game, get AJ Dillon more involved, and just try and control the pace. I mean, if they can keep the ball out of Josh Allen's hands, I think that's going to be the recipe to just, you know, make sure that you can sustain sustain drives against this team. So um, I'm willing to take the points here just because it is such a large number um, and just, you know, letting letting Buffalo go out there and, and prove it, you know, once again that, yeah, we can just boat race any team that kind of comes to fruition um, against us. But, you know, when it's – they've been covering by so much and the Packers have not been able to cover to save their lives and it's been happening for weeks on end. When I see, you know, trends like that show their face, I, I tend to lean uh, the underdog side. Yeah, uh, Packers plus 10.5 is where I'm at as well. Talked about that on Tuesday uh, because 
I, I mentioned this Tuesday, but my, my model does not back test well in these large spreads where typically what will happen is if a team is favored by 10 and a half means they're much better and you can get a blood situation where our script gets out of hand and they don't cover as a result of playing catch up the entire game. Right. But I don't know if the Packers will necessarily get there. I think that they've been, like you said, good enough early in games to keep this game close. So maybe it won't be a super negative game script. Um, and again, looking at the 2022 only model, because my priors were high on the Packers coming into this year. So I want to make sure I am accounting for how bad they've been. It still says it's a 7.21 point game. So a bit closer there, the actually the, the blended model with the prior actually says the Bills should be favored by 8.32. So uh, that one's actually a bit lower on the Packers somehow or higher on the Bills. So I'm going to take the Packers plus 10 and a half. Like you said, it feels gross, but. Just based on the way this thing this thing looks, I feel like I want to go that direction. I, I'm not sure if this was a, okay, we're going to make you pay a bills tack. I'm not sure if they wanted this out of the teaser zone to make sure people weren't getting across uh, across seven and across three with a teaser mm-hmm. on the bills. I'm not sure really what it was, but right. it just seems like it's a bit high at 10 and a half. And if I can get 10 and seven and three and a, a Packers win all in my range of outcomes, I want to take that. So I think the Packers plus 10 and a half is a way to go here. Um, they were plus 430 on the money line earlier on this week. I uh, thought that was interesting. <laughs> that was at Caesars, uh, not at FanDuel. They're four, four to one at FanDuel right now. I don't think that's quite enough for me to take it, but if they yeah. were to go to 430, I would uh, be intrigued on the money line there, at least as well. Okay. Right. Where else do you see in value for week number eight, Ryan? Uh, let's look at the card here. Um, so, you know, we're looking at New England in a bounce back spot. I feel like even though they're on the road, Mac Jones will be starting again. But Zach Wilson, um, you know, just has has been not he's he's been covered by the way the defense has been playing and the way that Brees Hall was playing. And with Brees Hall being out for the year, unfortunately, you know, we pour one out for him. Um, just having an incredible year was looking like he would be a top pick um, in next year's fantasy draft uh, come 2023. But yeah, it's just, you know, a bounce back spot for Bill Belichick, like him coming off of a loss. And then, you know, as a short favorite, I will take that every, every time um, when I can get the chance, especially um, with the way that I think, you know, the Jets have been playing. Um, <clears throat> also in the early slate, love Arizona um, at three and a half, honestly, um, against the Vikings who are who are coming off of the bye as well, too. But just, you know, looking at the way that the Arizona offense has been playing, especially with DeAndre Hopkins being back. I know Hollywood Brown being out is unfortunate, but this team is just over the over the years with Hopkins being suiting up for this team. The offensive numbers have been so much better um, with him being at the helm. Also, we're looking at James Conner. You know, is he coming back? Even if he doesn't, you know, Benjamin has been able to kind of hit stride there. You're getting three and a half um, on the number there, even though they're on the road. Um, I I am interested in the Arizona Cardinals. And then let's talk about the Detroit Lions who are at home. They're facing Miami. Miami's banged up. Uh, They're banged up, especially on uh, the defensive side of the football um, in the secondary. And so we're looking at St. Brown left last game with the concussion. I think he'll be okay to come back. Um, Josh Reynolds has been kind of making a name for himself. Uh, DeAndre Swift, we should get back. He's been off of the injury report, I believe, all this week, which is a great <laughs> sight to see. It feels like it's been week one since that's been the case. Um, but, you know, this was a team that we traditionally had loved to cover, you know, under the Dan Campbell regime. And yeah, they got, you know, they had an unfortunate situation against New England Patriots where people, you know, thought they were frauds, but it's Bill Belichick, you know, uh, at, at Foxborough where they were playing them. Um, I'm willing to buy back into the, to the lines, especially with people off of them. So I'll take that three and a half number there as well. Yeah, that one, uh, they also faced uh, Dallas last week. You mentioned they lost St. Brown early on in that game. They didn't have DJ Chark. Josh Reynolds was banged up. No DeAndre Swift there. It's a very different situation now than it was last week. So I think that makes a lot of sense. On the Arizona one, I actually took their money line yesterday, uh, plus 162 at that time. Ooh, okay. It's now down to plus 148. Um, I don't want the money line anymore, but three and a half. I can get behind that. I think yeah. that that one, the, the spread has not moved as much as the money line has. And I think there's still some value there. So if I were betting that game at the current market, I would say the three and a half is more intriguing to me than the money line. But uh, again, I I tried to quit them. Um, I, I'm back, I you guess. Can't quit uh, yeah. You can't I, quit like usually my numbers say they bet the Vikings every week. It hasn't been as much this year uh, as it was last year, where it was kind of a joke. Uh, but yeah, you know, I guess I, we're back on cliff. 
What could go yeah. wrong? <laughs> what can go wrong? I know I hate taking Cliff as well, too. Uh, but, you know, just one last thing, Jim, as we talk about that game, um, you know, the the Vikings really got a lot to, to show and prove for us. I mean, this is probably yeah. the best position that this team has been in to win the North. This is the best position that Kirk Cousins, you know, can be in to get into playoffs. And, you know, really, you know, right now they said, what, five, five and one or, mm-hmm. or six and one, whatever it is. Um, it, it, it's just, you know, you control your own destiny there. Um, so they got to come out and, and prove to us that they can, you know, you know, win these games that they're expected to win um, against struggling teams. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm not I'm not willing to be there yet with with Kirk Cousins and company, especially the way this Arizona defense has played against the run. It should be a little bit of a rough day for Dalvin Cook to get going. But again, if they if they really you know want to have people talk about them as far as being a contender, um, these are the games you got to win. Yeah, that's a game where both sides, if you bet it, are like, what could go wrong? Because right. like, <laughs> they're both the exact same. They're both just disappointments. I know the Vikings are five and one, but like they've they haven't played five and one. They they are annoying to bet. Uh, both teams are awful in that regard. So again, what could go wrong with talking at all about that <laughs> Cardinals versus Vikings game? That is all that we have here for week number eight from a, a money line spreads and totals perspective. But we are back once again tomorrow. JJ Zacharyson breaking down his favorite player props for week number eight over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Get that by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts and find it all in every show up on the FanDuel YouTube page as well. Ryan, good luck to you in week number eight. We'll talk to you once again Monday, but good luck with your bets, and uh, hopefully we can run it back and be as good this week as you were last week. Good luck to you, good sir, and and good luck to everybody out there. Shout out to everybody who's listening to Covering the Spread. We're having a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Just trying to win you guys some money. Uh, Just pocket change. No big deal, Uh, but appreciate everybody. Yeah, I'll take that uh, trip, extra trip to Subway. I'm in, you know, we'll do it for <laughs> sure. Uh, find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Thank you all for tuning in. Good luck to you this week. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down player props for week number eight. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> <laughs>